What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as The 365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate and Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector, and we're going to look at the action which is send an email. So as the action kind of suggests, uh, what this will be doing is sending an email. Uh, but let's take a look at it, let's look at some of the fields and what we need to fill in. So I'm in Power Automate here, I have a manual tree flow because I don't need anything from any dynamic content at the moment, we just need to trigger the flow. And then we can click on new step and we can choose the Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector. This has been recently rebranded from the Office 365 Outlook Connector um, and we can choose that. Then we have this one here, send an email v2. So we've got um, some required fields here, the to, the subject and the body. So the two we can um, you know, just type an email address into here, so Matt Collins and it's going to find my in my maiden name there. We do have some other options, so we can insert dynamic content. We do also have this switch to advanced mode, which allows me to actually, um, you know, put it in as an email like that and semicolon separate them and things like that. But you can add uh, multiple emails into here with semicolons or using that uh, advanced editor or basic editor. Uh, so this is the basic editor and this is the advanced editor of the text, which is unusual. Um, but yeah, we can we can add uh, add different email addresses into here. Uh, in the subject, so this is the subject for the email, so we could say um, power automate sending emails. Yeah, so I don't need full stop. Then we have the body, so the body of the email. So again, another required field. Uh, I don't think it's required if you actually try and send an email. Uh, it may just tell you that the body is not required when you try and send it through Outlook, but it is required for this connector. So we could say this is a cool email we are sending during a demo and then maybe we want to insert an expression and insert the time into here uh, if it wants to work there you go. Um, we can do a lot of things that we can do with a lot of these editors so we can change the font for instance um, so we can change this font to be you know Georgia make it bigger um, which I'm not sure I actually did anything there uh, switch the curve view no didn't do anything uh, but we can essentially try and change the font, um, you know, make things bold and things like that, um, you know, change all these things, change the font size. Uh, we can change the colors and as well, we can take that, change that to green, or we can highlight it in purple, which kind of look really weird, add bullet points, etc. Um, as you kind of saw there, there is a there is a code editor as well, so you can actually just do this in HTML if you much prefer. Uh, which might be better if you have any dynamic content that you want to put in that needs to go in a certain way or it may need to be expandable. Uh, having HTML in here, you can build tables, you can build all your sorts of cool HTML stuff. Um, so really handy, really useful code editor there as well. Just as you can see, as I've been clicking around here, it's not, it doesn't always work as like great as you kind of hope um, and, and doesn't always do exactly what you, what you want it to. It's taking that now. So we can do all these all these cool things. Uh, we do have a show advanced options, so we can specify the send as. Uh, so this is the email to send it as. If it doesn't have one, it's going to use the person that triggers the flow, um, I believe. Um, if we do want to send it on behalf of someone, um, then we do need a send on behalf permission, which I think is, is set in, set, a setting in your exchange that you would need to set up. Um, we do have CC and BCC fields in here that we can do. Uh, we also have attachments, so we can actually add an attachment. Um, you do need to store the attachment somewhere for the out for the Outlook connector to, to grab it from somewhere. So if you store it in your SharePoint or your OneDrive, you would need to pull that content from there and attach it in here, uh, which you could do with like a, a get step in, in, in OneDrive for Business or, or a similar action in SharePoint. And we can also specify the importance because everyone loves it when you send an email with high importance. Um, they mainly go my recyclement um, because I just hate people that send emails with high importance. Every email is important. Um, that should be a t-shirt. Uh, we should we should get right on that. Um, but yeah, anyway, let's test this out. So we've got all this. Uh, we, we've added some stuff in. Uh, we're going to send the email. Uh, I'm going to send it to myself, so that'll be interesting. Uh, we don't have an attachment, but we've got some cool stuff in the body. So let's test this out. So click test. I'll perform a trigger action. We'll save and test. 
and we'll wait and then we'll run the flow and we'll click done, that's all done and it was successfully run so that, and then we heard a bong, which I'm not sure whether you heard but I heard a bong and here we go, so uh, this is a cool email I uh, was sending so there's different fonts here, different sizes, uh, different um, things in here uh, with the time and stuff like that. So I mean, it's how important, as I said, all emails are important. Um, how important emails should just join the bin. Um, so yeah, so we have all these cool things that we can use to send an email for. So this is probably one of the best connectors and probably one of the best actions in Power Automate. Because everyone's sending emails these days, just sending emails because of Automate things, you're sending emails as reminders, you're sending emails to catch up with people. There are so many reasons why you would send an email. So um, so there are so many uses for this um, connector and this action. So I'm actually not going to ask you what you use this for because I think it's very obvious. You're sending all your emails. Um, it's a great action. Uh, there's loads of cool features in it. As you can kind of see, as I'm working around it, it's a little bit buggy in, in some respects. Um, it may have been my computer, it may have been the, the connector, it may have been the experimental features that I've got turned on. But it is a little difficult to work with, it is, but I've never found a email editor that is, is perfect. There's always something wrong with them. Um, inside of Dynamics that I've used for years, that's been atrocious. Um, it's getting better. Uh, but yeah, this is this is at least a step in the right direction. It supports HTML editing, which is badass, and that's what I like to use. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did find it useful, if you could drop a like and maybe share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. If you've not already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.